for like powerlifting, like you, you, you're pushing all that shit up and then you pull back before the meet, like you, you decrease volume, you're pushing up intensity and then you don't, you don't to your peak. So that's how you, you push your strength up. But, yeah. But that, that has to do with like basically letting the muscles completely heal up um, and stuff like that. But that's what I'm saying. Like, I think you're right though, because I theoretically, I think that that's actually what happens is these fibers are just freaking ripped to all hell. What's up yeah. almighty. Welcome. Um, and I think that like, it just has to do with the fibers actually finally getting that chance to heal up because I think that there is like a point of diminishing return. And when you're truly overloading something, you're way past that point of diminishing return, like where you're yeah. not really gaining muscle. But for some reason, like when you stop, it's like so used to that stress load that I think the body just heals it faster or something like that, but it has a rounding effect to the muscle bodies. It's really, really weird. And like, I actually don't know why that is. I, I know it has to do with the healing of the muscle fibers, obviously, and getting that break, but it's interesting. Yeah. I just respond really to low volume. You what? What? I think I just respond like really well to uh, low volume. I oh. Think everyone does. <laughs> That's what it is. <laughs> everyone does. <laughs> everyone that likes working hard with someone's well to low volume. <laughs> Let's see. Honest. Apparently, because like the only way for people to actually train hard is to go low volume and drive up the intensity. Yep. Little, yeah. but not everyone can do that. And if you do more okay. than you're used to, oh, gone. What's weird to me is so when I moved to powerlifting and I cut back on volume and, and I increase intensity, that's when I started getting injured more. Say that one more time. When I moved to powerlifting in 2019 and I went from like doing my more volume style, like in frequency with bodybuilding, mm -hmm. to reducing volume and driving intensity, I started getting injured more. Well, yeah, because you're pushing more weight. Like it's, if the form breaks down at a lower volume, then you're tearing something. Like you're. But dude, no, I was still pushing. I was pushing heavy fucking weight with volume. I'm just dude. It's like it's like shoulders, dude. People say like, oh, like for like medial delts. If I go in there and try to do like heavy weight and and move it, I'm shit. But if I can like do a, a seated lateral and I do like six plus sets of like 15 to 20 reps. That's like, I will finally feel a pump in my, in my delts. Like I will finally feel activation in my delts. I do not feel activation in certain muscle groups without some high, like a level of volume. It's always been that way. So I am the same way, mainly for auxiliary muscles. I consider it a delt on auxiliary muscle. I mean, you use it so much that like the front delts really not auxiliary. Squats. Just... Squats. What, do you volume? put me, do you, have me do so when i when i got with john and i said hey what do you want me to do top sets and he said you know yeah and it was even the first week but that first week dude because you gotta think I, I was doing like top sets with you know 80 plus percent like you know five like you know high fives to like low sets for like doubles and triples but as soon as i dropped to like 500 for fucking eight reps and then like did more volume after that with my accessory work my legs were smoked for like days we got to think like I've been doing like I've been doing low volume with powerlifting for so long. <laughs> but I think it's just the volume drives the level. It's I don't know, dude. I always like preferred. I see a lot of people nowadays. They do like a few exercises and they do intensity, and I'm like, dude, if I go in the gym and fit like three exercises and drive intensity, like, I don't feel shit. Like nothing. Well, how are you, like, how are you like, driving like, intensity? Huh? Like how are you driving intensity? Like what? What is? What, it's it's. I don't think it's intensity. What What is your intensity? Oh. So if you're talking about intensity, like you, if you're increasing the weight and driving the intensity, like with controlled form, that's intensity. Like it's the intent. It still doesn't do shit for me. So I find best rep form or rep ranges for me is very similar to you. Like I need that eight rep range. I need it. Like, and then I think once I break 12, I start hitting a point of diminishing return, but it depends, right? Like sometimes on squats, man, if you just get under a squat bar and you get 20 reps or plus reps on it, you're yeah. going to be smoked. And I don't know what that pump is just unparalleled by any other movement. I mean, it's not like leg press, leg press. You can sit there and you can do 40, 50 reps with a lot of weight. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And like the pump is like, and the pump is pretty ridiculous, but it's not the same as doing like 20 plus reps of squats. Yeah. And you know, I think that squats build beautiful. And Paul and I were talking about this. I, like, I was like, yeah, you can take out squats if you want to. But I just think that barbell, 
back squats, even a front squat, just build beautiful legs. And I think it has to do with the internal stretching of the, like the actual biomechanics of like pathing over the, the heel or, or pathing over the foot a little bit better um, and that, sh- that internal stretch that it creates. And that's actually what creates growth. It's similar to like back, right? When I was talking to Phil Heath about growing back, um, his number one thing is stretching, stretching between every set stretch and then i was like you know like the reason why my back got so big because everyone's like dude your back just like hangs there i'm like honestly it's not due to like what i do right now it's due to what i originally did when i didn't care about if i blew up my lower back right because always like you're like constantly hanging and i think that that just that stretch creates that fascia stretching and i think it allows the muscles to just grow and to allow the nutrients to get well, in the areas it's like me my lats like same thing. They just basically like insert to my ass. It's like a, it's like a, it's a crack. My ass crack goes up my back. Is what it is. So, uh, but I was big on like old school Arnold back in the day. I used to do like rows off of a bench press, like they would do, and I would like come all the way down and row up, like a de- a, a, a deficit. Interesting. Remember when Arnold? Arnold would stand on the edge of a bench press for like two seventy five and row it. Oh yeah. Wait, that was on the edge of the bench. I can't even remember that. Gosh. Okay. Yeah. I've done it before with like two seventy five. So that's like a pen lay row, but more intense. Yeah, a deficit pen lay row, basically. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. I don't know. I don't get good activation out of pen lay rows. It's the only thing. That's the only reason why I didn't. I, I tried it for a little while. Um, <laughs> one thing I did like, though, is I do like RDLs with snatch grip, like way out wide. I don't know why. That's much like that. The thing with pen lay rows that people don't understand is like, so if, you, if you're creating external rotation when you're pulling through, that's yeah. how you get more of a lat contraction. Mm-hmm. But if you're not in, if you're not externally rotating, you're keeping it more neutral. That's where you're hitting your mid upper back. And it also depends on the bar pathing. Like if it's more to your chest, obviously more upper back. And if you create internal rotation and when you pull, you pull into your hips, that's when you're you're getting more lat activation just because of the drive. It's the line of pull, is all it is. Like yep. that one may line of pull mechanical tension. That's that that's gonna tell, that, that's gonna tell you where you're you're creating. I just don't like the, uh, I don't like the neutral pull. I just feel like it's an awkward movement for the um, rear delts is the only thing. Like, I feel like it's, it's asking for like a rotator cuff injury because it's such a heavy amount of volume onto a rear delt. If you're technically pulling it properly, but like, if like when you like, like you're saying rotate down, that's where like, that's where all my rows pretty much say, I pay, pretty much stay in a low row uh, type of range of motion. I don't know. It just feels better for me. I, um, you guys are talking about like, pull and the stretch so every single back movement that i've done over the last few years or so it's always a deep fucking stretch whether it just be pull downs whether it just be with bent over rows whether it just be with um uh dumbbell rows speaking of dumbbell rows your routine has me doing dumbbell rows i decided to do something a little different than what most people usually do i put the bench on an incline yeah yeah, yeah. a lot of people do that, like that. Yeah, it's yeah, better it's that way. Row. Oh, yeah. okay. I thought like I thought people just like have it just flat out and they just fucking do it that way. Are you talking no. about like do you do you lay on the bench or do you like lean on the bench? I lean on the incline bench. So usually back what I used to do was essentially. Do you have pants yeah. on? <laughs> yeah, I do. But like the so bench, much can't move. <laughs> so, like the bench would be like all the way down up to like yeah, here. Flat. Okay. But now what I do, I basically bring the bench up and I kind of just put myself in like this position. More, more of right. get much of a better stretch. That's how I like it. Also, I actually don't do my hand down all the way down. I actually put my hand up on an incline bench too, and I grab. Yeah, all, that's or what I'll, I did. I'll grab on an even, upper dumbbell. An even right. better way to to reduce stabilization: lean on it like this. Mm. Yep. I think now, I, I mean, there's there's old school stuff like people like back in the day there were some people that would, that would lean on it like with their head they would do this and lean on with their head yep with their, yeah so I'll do that if I'm doing like rear delts and I want to make it really really hard on myself I'll put my head into it right but I won't yeah. do that if I'm holding like 120 pounds because I think it's just oh 100 like, yeah <laughs> well that's why I've always been a big fan of like if I if I have the ability like I just do rows off a rack and I literally put my hand on the dumbbell and lean. Yeah, but I make sure it's depending on where I'm going to pull. If I'm wanting more upper back, I'm obviously more upper at the torso because the line of pull. And I've more lats than like as I lean, the line of pull changes. So, yeah, um, trying to get her in right now. She's available. Oh, nice. Look how we're, we're recording and it says right here in my screen. It's yeah, and cool. we're streaming it. Oh, I should, I should have tagged her, right? But I guess she wasn't in here. So, yeah, fair enough. Her fault. <laughs> I'm dead. <laughs> She should have been here. 
Do you like how do you like how I'm like business on the top, casual at the bottom? Mm-hmm. Business on the top? Yeah. <sighs> casual on the bottom. Hey. But I mean, dude, I wear my sweats everywhere, dude. I don't give a fuck, dude. Like dude, me too. These things like you should see the bottom of these even dragging on the ground so much. Look at they have like no like green left. Dude, I would I'd go into the gym wearing those with my silkies underneath and just take them off underneath the gym. I am that fucking guy. Oh wow, really? Dude, so I, um, go ahead. Sorry. I, I don't wear I've never had pajamas in my life. We need to buy, we need to get Paul some pajamas. Yeah, let's let's invest in so these are Naruto pajamas. I think we need to get him so like maybe some Naruto, maybe some Dragon Ball Z ones, like mix it up a little bit for him. Ooh, I'd rather just I'd rather just be with my boxers, you know. Kaisen. Paul. Why did you are watch you guys the, the last episode of Jujutsu Kaisen? Oh wait, yeah. you, last week. Okay, this last this last one sucked. That was a filler. Don't don't ruin it because like I need to watch it. Like I'm going to start watching it. I found out on HBO Max they have the uh, dubbed version. Why yeah. are you guys saying it's it weird pajama? Wait, why pajama. are saying this... weird pajama? Pajama. Was there a right way to say it? <laughs> How does he say it? <laughs> Does he say Wait. pajama because it looks like there's the jam in the middle of it? Yeah, Peanut exactly. butter jelly time. Exactly. I can't be hungry. I'm only eating 5,200 calories a day and I'm losing weight. Leave me alone. <laughs> I'm, 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 basically, I'm basically eating what Paul probably ate growing up in Africa right now. Yeah, no, I know. Uh, that sucks. It sucks. I think it's probably hungry. less. <laughs> probably way less. You're going dude. to hell. You're going to hell. <laughs> cro- cro- I, snip that one. No, no, that's going through. <laughs> that's cool. I don't care. <laughs> You know, when you care. <laughs> what are you gonna See, do? This is, Cancel this is us? Paul's, 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 like, Paul's actually never like. Actually, you're eating more than I ate growing up. So you know. Yeah. Right. Good times. Um, probably like one. I was like, I was like intermittent fasting. It's like no wonder why my uh, T3 are so jacked up. <laughs> it's why you're so lean doing. easily. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Because oh, that is also a really good topic to bring up as well. That's actually mm. great that we just brought that up. Um, genetic factors when it comes to like your um, how fa- the way that you burn fat and how you utilize food. Okay, I well here's the thing is like, and people are gonna differ on me. Besides muscle, when you're talking about part of that, um, when when you're talking about part of the genetic component, right? When it comes to bodybuilding, when I'm just talking about an athlete, right? I don't care about your muscle body tie-ins, right? Like it doesn't mean anything because it's all, this is like the only aesthetic sport in the world. So remove that piece for a second. I think the biggest genetic component that turns someone into a freak of nature is strictly based off of their metabolic rate and how fast they can recover muscle bodies. So there is a genetic component there. Like I've always been able to eat a ton of calories when I was a kid and I did get metabolically damaged at one point in time. Someone really metabolically damaged me and it slowed down my metabolism. So a lot of these, for instance, women that get metabolically damaged, I can take a bikini girl that was probably eating like, oh my gosh. 1200 calories or something like that. And I fixed their metabolic damage, which is usually hormones actually depend on that metabolic damage. I've had bikini girls eating 400 to 450 grams of carbs. No joke. And uh, I think that's really what dictates like overall, like muscle development over time. So um, definitely a genetic component that goes in there. I don't actually know like what gene dictates metabolic rate because a lot of that is environmental due to your stress levels. What is he doing? He's like, he's like walking in slow motion. He's trying to be Bigfoot. Uh, it's like play the cue the Pokemon theme song. Get your master ball ready. There's a Snorlax coming up. <laughs> 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 I'm so dead. But um, yeah, like, so what I was thinking is like, I think my me- metabolism itself, just from being back home, it's also like, there's also like an environmental um, reason as well to it. Because like when I was back home, I mean, yeah, it might've been slightly malnourished a little for like maybe like eight to 10 years and growing up, but also I was being very active. So that environmental aspect of it might've kind of set up my set point to be at a ridiculously high metabolism, especially when we did our blood work, my blood work, my T3 was like supposedly high in a sense. High, high. <laughs> yeah. So I high. wonder if that's, it, it was like three points off, like like three points. Three, three points, points off of breaking the physiological range. Like that's that what high. That means? Yeah, that's like, su- like you're basically super physiological if you break that range. Like that's one thing, reason why I said we right. actually have to watch that is because like you're essentially hyperthyroidism now. 
like as theoretically. Um, so if you stay in the hyperthyroid realm for too long, you can develop something called Graves' disease. Um, so yeah, uh, Hashimoto's, Hashimoto's is the other end of the scale. Graves' disease is very, very uncommon, by the way. Yeah. But it's essentially an autoimmune disease and it kills your thyroid. It's mm. Hashimoto's kills your thyroid by being hypo, it kills it off. Hyper, it can kill it off too. So it's just something that we have to monitor. Um, that's all so I, what would I, be I, the counter towards that? Probably just eating more foods or what? To slow down be. metabolic. Well, there's a lot of factors that go into it. You know, it was just crazy that you were hyper, that hyper. It also could have been because your test levels were so low. Yeah. Um, having some type of thyroid dysfunction from it. So like, that's why I said, we just have to monitor it. Like if it's hyper again, like super hyper, then it's something that we're going to have to take into consideration. And there may be a potentially a medical route to save your thyroid from dying out. Um, it just depends. Um, there may be foods and stuff like that, but it's very, very uncommon. It's a very rare disease. Um, like Hashimoto's is relatively common and it has a yeah. hormone, hormone dysfunction can literally make you develop Hashimoto's disease. It's an autoimmune disease. So usually cortisol responses trigger it. And there's also indicators that you basically were sick, right? So that could also be an indicator of a disease. Um, but you weren't Spiden. sick. Huh? Yeah, I wasn't sick. I didn't felt like I was yeah. sick. It was like your lymphocytes were a little bit high. They weren't like super high to the point where I was like, oh shit kind of thing. But um, th those are like things that we just have to monitor during your period of time of like you being with me. It's, it's like things that I have noted in my head for like, but part of it could have been that your test levels are off, right? Um, yeah. Your hormones were way off. So uh, that affects thyroid directly, like a direct impact of thyroid. Well, I mean, I've always been like that, though, where my metabolism has just always been that insanely fast. I mean, I just posted a video of what I looked like when I was fucking, like, I guess, 13, 14, maybe 15, 16-ish. You were a beanstalk. Yes, I was very tiny, and I was small, and I was, like, really skinny. Like, I was, like... You were small pulled. Yeah. So, like, I've always had, like, really fast metabolism, but also, like, what about, what about environmental factors also affecting that, plus having more muscle mass on top of that? It does. Dude, everything, everything at the end of the day is, is, is some some form of factor. Like, definitely your environment. And it's crazy. Like, I think it's something I thought about recently like, that cracks me up is bodybuilders and, like, this uh, this idea about, like, having to train at certain gyms. And then oh, you see, like, these, you see these videos of, like, dudes, like, literally over in Africa. Like, the, the one that was going on recently, this dude deadlifting in the rain. Oh, I like, saw that. And yeah. it's, like. And it's like you see these dudes, you see these dudes over Ow. there in the middle of fucking nothing and they're jacked. All that all that matters is work your fucking ass off. Like Paul, think about like how we talked about even David, like in our younger years. Like, dude, I was a dude before I ever took anything in my mid-20s, natty as fuck. People were like, dude, th they always thought I was on gear. I never and I never pushed food. I just went in and trained my fucking ass off. I didn't care, like grab a barbell, grab some fucking dumbbells. I'm gonna fucking move until it, it hurts. Yep. And that's what it was. It wasn't like, uh, I need, I need my knee wraps and my reverse band and my elbow sleeves and my wrist wraps <laughs> and my every fucking compound. I'm like, I don't get me wrong. Like I like having that, but I do. And I, I don't know. I was talking to someone recently about this idea. Like it's weird seeing a lot of bodybuilders use elbow sleeves for like fucking everything or even Whoa. like they use wrist the elbow wraps. wraps or <laughs> I saw, I saw someone the other day using a reverse band hat squat, which is great because it takes load out of the hole off your knees but using fucking wraps on their knees. Why? It defeats the purpose. Insane, you should know, man. you should know when you can't do it. That's a thing. Like, like I don't use wrist wraps because I want to know when my wrists are actually having issues because it actually creates, when I use wrist wraps, it actually creates more issues for me long-term. Like I'll notice well, how my wrists get weaker and stuff like that. And they don't hold the bar as well. That's well, here's what it is. And, 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 and it goes back to the idea that like, dude, Ronnie Coleman, that motherfucker could train, but dude, he used like, wraps like knee wraps on leg press on hat squats like to oh to, to really just overload the muscle but the thing is like when you accelerate muscle growth at that rate without allowing your tendons and your ligaments and everything else to catch up or like at least try to stay with it that's what created fucking bad hips bad knees bad this Goodness. man it's like and you see power lifters in their fucking like 40s and 50s still smashing heavy fucking weights like do you see like 70, 80 year old fucking dude still like deadlifting 500 fucking plus pounds. Yeah, but also but, yeah, power lifters. I'm oh, sorry. No, but I was going to say power lifters are also not growing muscles at an accelerate rate compared to like a bodybuilder. No. 
but I'm saying it, it, it's also because they've allowed their their body to, to to catch up. Like the purpose for me is like it's you see this in, in bodybuilding where you see the excessive growth. Like, and I'm not talking about growth in general. There's that, but uh, <laughs> the the size factor, man. Like to put on so much size in such a short amount of time period. Like their bodies literally they have to use this stuff because their bodies can't keep up with it. Mm. Their joints can't. So they have to use elbow sleeves all the time and wrist wraps and knee wraps and, and all this. And it's like, man, like, because they want to like, you see these people go from this point to like this fucking point, which used to take half a decade to a decade to do within years. And it's like, you see these, the younger generation just taking everything fucking known to man. And it's like, dude, like you're in your, early 20s and you look older than me you know so like i think one of the reasons and i try to tell people this i would if i stayed 100 natural i'd probably be almost as big as i am today but i went from 135 pounds to 210 pounds in three years my body was bound to get big and yeah now i was just eating and training my ass off and then i yeah. was natural for like total of like six years five six years yeah. um and i say so either like, 25 if you if if you're under 25, if you're under 25, stay natty to at least 25. So I was if you're 25 and you just got into training, train for five years. You should have at least five to six years of intent, like very intensive and intent training before you, ju- you jump on it. Well, you know, it works for you too. That my biggest thing is, you know, it works for you and your body grows as is naturally intended to. So you don't have like disproportionate, weird muscle growths in areas that you don't do just because you have poor form the whole time when you're on exactly. gear. because your body, like you didn't let your body completely fully develop your brain fully develop and things like that. Um, which is just kind of basic concept. Like males brains don't fully develop until we're 24 years old. Now it might be, some people might be a little bit earlier or something. Huh? Might be <laughs> What'd you know? say? Uh, they also can't listen very well, apparently. Oh, no, we have selective hearing. That's actually a, a God's <laughs> gift. That's, That's God's gift good. to mankind. Uh, no, it, it's well, 24 to 26 is like when the brain really starts to develop uh, the frontal frontal lobe. But uh, yeah. so um, back to what we were talking about, about like muscle growing at an incredibly fast rate compared to like just giving it time. And I think that's a problem. That, that is a problem because now everyone wants to get like these incredibly fast results in a short period of time and they want to do it, but then they end up just kind of like, I guess, burning out. But like my, me, for example, like I started training when I was maybe like 110 pounds in 2010. I don't really bring this out, but like I started training when I was like 110 pounds in 2010. I could have been way bigger if I wanted to. I literally could have been way bigger if I wanted to. But I knew from this, I didn't know, but like I saw like how most bodybuilders are pretty jacked up and they're pretty like strong and shit like that. I was like, I don't want to be like fucking this certain height and then weigh like fucking 250, 260. But I'd rather just take my time with it. It's very hard to be able to get into that mentality and that mindset to tell you, hey man, maybe just maybe you need to kind of just like play it out and take your time as you go and just like the muscles that you're gaining. Eventually, once you get to that certain point where I'm at now, you look fucking ridiculous. So I basically just did that. I just took everything slowly, gradually over time. Like if I, I believe that if I wanted to, not to be egotistical, but if I wanted to be bigger, all I had to do is just take more shit and, and I could just fucking grow. That's, <laughs> but I, I didn't want that. That's a fucking truth, dude. Yeah. Yeah, but I didn't want that because I like, I look the way I am is pretty much, I look okay now. And also like, I didn't want to like end up injuring myself towards like later years. I literally have new injuries. No injury at all. I don't well, either. That that goes back to the idea of like. <laughs> so I can't sit down. Still a few days ago. Hurts. Not from no, lifting. It, just it from sprinting. So <laughs> yeah, no, like my life keeps going numb. That's why I keep moving. <laughs> that that goes back to the idea of like, dude, I didn't want to like do bodybuilding until Classic Physique came out, and then I remember they were like, someone I know is like, dude, oh my god, like that's what you want to do, and then you know I tried to prep for it in 2017, got sick. Uh. And then 2019, but then I was like, hey, I'm going to do a powerlifting meet. And I was like, okay, well, fuck bodybuilding for a little bit because I'm going to do a powerlifter. Uh, but now it's like, even now, people still are like, but dude, oh, man, dude, fuck that, dude, do 212, 212, 212. Like, I was no. like, no, man. No. Like, and, I, and, I, and I've mentioned this to you before. Like, the more I hear people tell me you want to do 212, the more I say, like, I just, I'm like, I don't want to compete now. I have no desire. I, I have no desire. Like, don't get me wrong. 
there anybody that does 212 does open you can't I, I don't deny that work fucking crazy physiques love looking at them it's awesome i just i personally have no desire to be that person i i don't want to be that big i don't even like it when i get to fucking like over 210 with my fucking weight i just i don't like how it feels and there's no way to say like it feels healthy to ever be that big it doesn't you can say it's like oh you have all, all the best blood work this and that i'm like okay cool how do you feel how do you feel when you tie your fucking shoes how do you feel when you function through life like i at the end of the day, I like being functional. I like doing my handstands. I like being a fucking athlete. So it's like, it's hard for me to want to like push up that weight. So like, I, that's why I've never like eaten a lot, a whole lot of food. I've never pushed food ever in my life. Have I ever done like a crazy bulk? I just don't, I get to a certain point. I'm like, okay, I'm too heavy now. Time to cut. Yeah. And that's how I've always done it throughout, throughout my life. So like I was like 160 pounds in high school. That was fucking 2005. And I'm only, Right now, you know, cutting 194.6 this morning. That's really not, that's 30 pounds in over, over fucking 10 years, but I never pushed it. I'm like, I had no desire to want to be 250 pounds or like 230 pounds lean. I'm like, why? I think if people get hung up over these weights, right? So like my issue is like, I, I am class physique, right? Like I'm built for class physique. I'm not built for 212. Well, I mean, 212, I could technically fall into, but I'm a little bit too tall for 212. Yeah. Um, and I like the bodybuilding look, don't get me wrong, but I'd have a classic look in the bodybuilding world. And I'm okay with that. That's what bodybuilding yeah. is supposed to be anyways. Um, it's like, I don't realistically think like on stage, I would be a... I could probably be, if I wanted to push my body where I was uncomfortable and not comfortable with my life, probably a 220, 225, eventually on stage, probably five years, 10 years down the road around that range. Yeah. But realistically is my body, it falls into classic physique. That's where I should be. Yeah. I don't need to push anything. I've never need to push anything to grow. And I am still too big now for amateur class physique weight. Pro weight is 200 pounds for me. And I fall right into that. My best look was 204 pounds getting ready for the show, but I was still 14 pounds over my weight four weeks out. And that's, and if you cut water, you're going to look like shit on stage. I try to explain people like, like you've got to keep water into a degree. And I didn't take it. Everyone asked me, they're like, did you take a diuretic to make weight? I actually didn't. I didn't take any diuretics or anything. It was just like, I, I had to cut water. Don't get me wrong to make my weight. Like I, we didn't want to risk it because like I was borderline. I was like, 188.8 or something like that when I weighed in. So I just like brimmed off, but I, like, I, I didn't eat for like 12 hours or 14 or 16 hours by that point. And so I would have yeah. dropped the water weight from that anyways. But either way, I mean, like, and it's like forcing yourself into certain classes and stuff like that. It's also unhealthy, right? Bodybuilding is unhealthy. Cutting down, you want to be the biggest that you can be in there. So you want to just brim into it is essentially what you yeah. want to do. But the best people I see at least at amateur level are people like Paul, right? Where they didn't really have to worry all that much about their weight class. They just kind of like, uh, were in no, weight class. I had to worry a lot about my fucking weight class for amateur level. I hated that shit. Oh, I, I thought that you didn't have an issue for last prep though. I, 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 I did. <laughs> I always did every fucking year. So oh, me too. what happened was like, I had to like cut water because I had to drop all the way down to like, so with everything that was going on a week to two weeks prior, I was 194 pounds. <laughs> so I had to like, the fuck out. Yes. Yeah, so I had to like cut everything out. So I lost literally like almost like 20 pounds in like the course of two weeks. Cause when I stepped in on stage, I weigh 176. And that sucked. I hated that shit. Because I like had to starve myself for like fucking like 48 hours, but I was doing so good prior. But then like I had to starve myself for, like 48 hours and I just felt like shit. And that was the one thing I was trying to avoid this entire time during that entire prep, but I did it. But now I don't have to worry about that anymore. Yeah, you're 190 class now, right? Dude, Fuck yeah. I remember I remember fucking FaceTiming this dude one time and it was like at night. <laughs> he's ever eating his fucking chicken. This dude has like a fucking, he's like, dude, peanut butter, man. <laughs> he's like just eating peanut butter with a spoon while he's eating fucking chicken breast it would actually taste it pretty good dude chicken dude I, i've had chicken and peanut butter before it's fucking delicious yeah. Yeah. Did you have, like, had time, ever? I, didn't, I didn't have any uh my my fourth meal is chicken veggies and usually like 30 grams of nuts i don't fucking have my nuts on me i didn't have my nuts on me <laughs> so i had to like i ate some peanut butter but it's crunchy peanut butter and i was like oh this is so fucking good right now just so so tasty <laughs> yeah just rub it in my face because i can't eat peanut butter anymore 
filler. <laughs> yeah, I never. Uh, I thought we talked about this. I did learn. Should I go? Them. Should I go grab the tub and just be like, look at it, David? Just fucking do it. Be like, hey, <laughs> hey, David. Just like. <laughs> Every time David says peanut butter, take a take a take a take a scoop. <laughs> but yeah. a, a new drinking game. <laughs> <laughs> but um, oh, my goes Paul's Paul's amateur. No, Paul's not amateur. Paul is very was. pro. Was amateur not too long ago and is about to be one of the top pros in the world. So, but um, back to 